In this session we're going to be looking at how we calculate variable overhead variances. First of all, let's explain what we mean by variable overheads. Well, variable overheads, it's not material costs, it's not labour costs, it's expenses. Um, and we're talking about things that vary in direct proportion to the level of output. So examples would include things such as patent royalties that have to be paid on the number of units that we produce. The more units that we produce, the greater the cost. Likewise, power costs. Again, the more units that we produce, the greater our power costs are going to be. Now, the first var uh, variance that we can calculate is called the total variable overhead variance. And this is going to be the difference between the actual overhead that we incur um, and, also, uh, and we compare that against the standard overhead we should have incurred for our actual output. Now, with materials and labour variances, we were able to split the total um, variance into two separate elements and we can do the exact same thing with our total variable overhead variance. We can split them first of all into the variance which is caused by differences in the amount that we pay per unit of our overhead and this is known as the variable overhead expenditure variance and secondly we can um, identify the variance that's caused by differences in the quantity of our overhead that's required to produce our units. And this is our variable overhead efficiency variance. So how do we calculate our overhead variances? Well, first of all, we're going to uh, calculate what the standard quantity of overhead for actual production at the standard rate for our overhead is, and we're going to compare that with our actual variable overhead cost. The difference between those two figures is our total variable overhead variance. Then we're going to calculate a third figure, and this is going to be the actual quantity of overhead that we've used at the standard rate for that overhead. Once we've done that, we can then split that total variable overhead variance into two components. The difference between our top two figures is going to be our variable overhead efficiency variance and the difference between our the bottom two um, figures is our variable overhead expenditure variance. Let's have a look at an illustration. Here's our scenario. A product needs a standard four machine hours and each machine hour uh, has a standard running cost associated with it of six pounds per hour. So each unit that is made should cost four hours multiplied by six pounds per hour or 24 pounds. Now last week the business made 800 products and used 3,000 machine hours and there was a total um, variable overhead cost of £18,300. So the first thing we do, we calculate what our cost should have been for those 800 products that we actually produced. Well, those 800 products, each one um, should have taken a standard four hours per unit. So overall, we should have used 3,200 hours in making those products. Each hour should have cost six pounds. So our standard cost for our 3,200 hours should have been 19,200. So we can now calculate our total variable overhead variance. It's going to be the standard cost for our 800 units, which we've just calculated as £19,200. 
and we'll uh, look at the difference between that figure and the actual cost that was incurred and that was £18,300. So we've got a £900 variance and it's favourable as our actual cost was lower than the standard cost. What we're now going to do, we're going to look at how much our actual quantity of overheads should have cost. Well, we need to first of all establish um, what our actual quantity of overheads were. There were 3,000 hours. Um, each of them should have been charged at £6 per hour. So our 3,000 hours should have cost us £18,000. So now we're in a position to calculate the split of our total variable overhead variance. As shown on the, uh, on the screen at the moment, um, we have a variance of £900 and it was favourable. And we can split that. So first of all, we can calculate our variable overhead efficiency variance. This is the difference between our top two figures of 19200 and 18000 that gives me a variance of £1,200 and I know that that's favourable because the actual quantity of hours of my um, machine was lower than the standard quantity of hours for the machine for actual production. Then I can calculate um, my variable overhead expenditure variance. Well, here I'm, I'm comparing the £18,000 with £18,300. That gives me a variance of £300. And it's an adverse variance because in both cases I'm looking at the same number of hours or machine hours, but the actual cost of each of those machine hours was slightly higher than the standard rate for that overhead. The last thing to note is that if I combine my efficiency and expenditure variance, uh, I can then return back to my total uh, variable overhead variance. So 1200 less 300, that gets me back to the 900 pounds favourable.